Hello people, welcome back. This question is from gate 2014 exam and is for two marks. They are saying this host A wants to send 1000 bytes of data to host B. Both of these machines A and B are connected via two routers R1 and R2 and bandwidth of these links is 10 raised to the power 6 bytes per second. Now in question they are talking about three cases. Case one is we send this 1000 byte file as one packet only. Okay. Case two is this file or this 1000 bytes of data is used to create 10 packets of equal size. And case three is we create 20 packets from this data. Okay. Let T1 be the time taken in case one. T2 is the time taken in case two. That means when we just created 10 packets to send those 10 packets T2 is the total time taken. Parallelly, T3 is the total time taken in case 3. Okay. On every packet, there is a mandatory 100 byte header. Okay. So if you're sending one packet, there will be 100 bytes of header. If you're sending 10 packets, there will be 10 headers each of 100 byte and so on. Okay. Now in question, they're also mentioning that propagation time is negligible. Propagation delay as well as processing delay. So once A has sent some packet, that means if A has completely transmitted a packet, it will be immediately received by router R1. There is no propagation delay. Okay. So you can just neglect the time that will be taken by last bit on this link. Okay. That can be neglected. Also, this router will immediately forward it. Okay, it will immediately start transmitting it. It will not require any kind of processing delay. Okay. So the question is, what is relation between T1, T2 and T3? You do one thing, you can pause the video and you can read the question once if you want to. Also, you can have a look at the four options. Okay, now let us start this question. First of all, let's talk about case one. In case one, only one packet is sent and it is of 1000 bytes. Let us see what is the transmission time taken for case one. Okay. Transmission time will be length of the packet divided by bandwidth available. Length of the packet is 100 bytes, sorry, 1000 bytes plus 100 byte header that is 1100 bytes. Bandwidth is 10 raised to the power 6 bytes per second. Okay. Now you can see bytes and bytes will get cancelled and the unit will be seconds only. This per second will become seconds when written in numerator. So this is 1100 microsecond. Okay. Now have a look. A will transmit this packet in this much time. Okay, immediately R1 will receive once transmission is done. That means after 1100 microseconds, immediately this router will receive because in question it is mentioned propagation delay is neglected. Then R1 will also take this much time only to transmit it. Parallelly R2 will also take this much time only. So one transmission delay here, one transmission delay here and one transmission delay here. That means total 3 TT time is required. Okay. So value of T1 will be 3 times 1100 microsecond. Okay. That is 3300 microseconds. Okay. Now let us talk about case 2. In case 2, we create 10 packets. So size of each packet will be 100 bytes plus 100 byte header. That is one packet is now of 200 bytes. So let us find the transmission time for case two. It will be 200 bytes of data. This is packet size divided by the bandwidth available. Bandwidth is 10 raised to the power six bytes per second. This comes out to be 200 microseconds, okay. Now see, packet number one, okay, we have total 10 packets. Packet number one will be transmitted by the source in 200 microseconds completely, okay. So after 200 microseconds, 
पैकेट नंबर वन विल बी हियर ओके एंड पैकेट नंबर टू टू पैकेट नंबर टेन इट विल बी विद द सोर्स नाउ सी दिस राउटर विल स्टार्ट ट्रांसमिटिंग पैकेट नंबर वन एंड इन द सेम टाइम ओनली पैकेट नंबर टू विल बी ट्रांसमिटेड बाय द सोर्स ओके सो बोथ ऑफ दीज बोथ ऑफ दीज पार्टीज आर वर्किंग इन पैरल दिस इज कॉल्ड पाइपलाइन ओके earlier one entire file was transmitted here then it was transmitted here okay so they were working separately now both of these parties they are uh, working at the same time okay so it is transmitting file number 2 sorry packet number 2 and r1 is transmitting packet number 1 after additional 200 microseconds this transmission will be over that means packet number 1 will reach here packet number 2 will reach here and a will start transmitting packet number 3 okay so in additional 200 microseconds these transmissions will also be over so packet number 1 has reached the destination packet number 2 has reached here and r1 now has packet number 3 okay a is ready to transmit packet number 4 okay see how much time has the first packet taken 200 microseconds here 200 here and 200 here that is packet 1 it took 200 microseconds into 3 this much time okay and remaining all of the packets they took only 200 microseconds because see now after spending this much time packet number 1 has reached but in next slot that is only after 200 microseconds this packet number 2 will also reach because in this much time only packet number 2 has already traveled half way okay now only in 200 microseconds you will get packet number 2 and when packet number 2 reaches here by that time already packet number 3 will be here that means in additional 200 microseconds b will get packet number 3 also so in every 200 microseconds one packet will be received by b okay that means packet 2 to 10 all of these packets require only 200 microseconds each so total time will be 200 microseconds into number of packets how many are these these are nine packets okay so what is the total time it will be 200 into 12 right 9 10 11 12 200 into 12 will be 24 100 microseconds now see earlier the time that was taken it is 33 100 microseconds the unit is microsecond now we require only 2400 microseconds that means t1 is greater than t2 okay i'm just writing values of t1 and t2 in red color sorry so this one was 3300 microseconds and t2 is 2400 microseconds now let us find t3 okay i'll just do it quickly for t3 packet size is packet size is going to be 50 plus header will be 100 that is the total length of packet will become 150 transmission time in third case will be 150 divided by 10 raised to the power 6 seconds this is equal to 150 microseconds okay and what will be the total time taken first packet requires 150 into 3 okay so first packet it takes 150 into 3 these many microseconds and remaining 19 packets they will require see total were 20 so 19 packets are remaining so remaining 19 packets require 150 microseconds each so is this visible 
I don't think so. Anyways, I'll just write it here. Packet number two to nineteen. They require one fifty into nineteen these many microseconds. So this will be one fifty into twenty two, right? One fifty into twenty two is thirty three hundred only. Okay. Yeah, it is correct. Thirty three hundred. So T three is also equal to thirty three hundred. Now let us find out the relation between T one, T two, and T three. Obviously, T one is equal to T three. Comma, T one is greater than T two as well as T three is greater than. T two, okay. So the option which has these relations is correct one. Okay, let me see what is the answer. So option D, yeah, answer is option D because option D says T one is equal to T three and T three is greater than T two. Okay, so answer is option D. Now I will like to discuss few more points. First thing is. You can completely ignore this bandwidth. Okay, just take the bandwidth to be hundred, or you can take some constant like x, or you can even take bandwidth to be one, because we are not actually required to find out how much time is taken. We just want to compare these times. Okay, so to save time, you don't need to perform all of these calculations. Just take bandwidth to be x. Okay, so t two will be two hundred by x. That's it. Okay. So we can do so because in all of these three cases we haven't changed bandwidth. We have just reduced the packet size. In case one packet was of one thousand bytes, then packet is of hundred bytes. Then in case three packet is of fifty bytes. Bandwidth is same for all of three cases. So you need not take this exact value because we are not interested in the values of T one, T two, and T three. We just want a comparison. Okay. Now, other point that I like to discuss is pipelining prefers smaller packets. See, in case one packet was very large, so time taken was also very large. But if you reduce the packet size, for example, here we divided this file into ten packets, so one packet is of smaller size. Overall time taken has reduced. Earlier it was thirty three hundred microseconds. Now it is only twenty four hundred microseconds. Okay. But time can be reduced only up to certain limit. If you further reduce the packet size, thinking that less time will be taken, that is incorrect. See, if you reduce the packet size, total number of packets will keep on increasing. For example, here you had only one packet, now you have ten packets, and in case three you have twenty packets. Twenty packets means you have twenty headers also. Okay, so if you reduce the packet size uh, too much. Then you will have a lot of headers, and headers are overhead. Okay, so overhead will increase. Hence, the total time may start increasing. Okay, so we want to find a value of packet size that is not too large and that is not too small. Okay.